Hey everybody, this is Scott from Nscale Universe. Uh, just doing a short little video showing you the progress on my lumber yard. It's going to be on a siding. I'll show you soon where the uh, whole thing lies on the layout. Newest part we worked on tonight was previously, I think in the haul video that I put up, you saw this piece was already mounted. It's coming out pretty nice. I had a little bit more foam board in there. I chopped a piece out, heated in on a new piece of foam board. They fit in really nice. The overall footprint should be long enough and around the right size to lay in right with the track along here. What we did on the new piece of foam board was use the uh, Liquitex modeling paste. This stuff is awesome. Um, I can't say enough about it. It's water-based. It cleans up really, really easily. It's um, really flat and matte and chalky and you basically only have to do a couple layers of uh, that modeling paste onto the black matte foam board. Put a couple strips of basswood in, glued them down, another couple pieces of uh, matte board, different heights. Put another coat of the Liquitex modeling paste over that, maybe even another coat after it's dry. Use the X-Acto knife, score into it, and then move on to my gouaches. Really, again, uh, a go-to kind of uh, paint. Gouache is like watercolor, only it's matte and really chalky. So the combination of the modeling paste and the gouache paint gives you a super realistic kind of uh, concrete look. And uh, I like to take different chunks different sections and use different colors or different tones so it looks like they were built at different times. When you put the whole thing together after you uh, lay a base coat and then take a darker like black or mix up a gray or a burnt umber or something like that and push it in. You can use your finger and just kind of push it into the cracks and uh, that's all you really need to do to make some really cool looking realistic concrete. Um, the green is not even like a, a powder or anything like that. I'm just taking green gouache and painting it into the cracks. It's on such a small uh, scale when you're working in N that um, small bits of greenery don't even really need to be like the powder that you can buy and sprinkle on there and try and glue it in. Sometimes that's too much of a pain in the ass. Um, it looks really good when you're doing large portions of grass or on sidings or something like that, but for cracks in concrete and things, the scale is so small that you can get away with just painting green, and it looks almost more realistic because um, it's just so fine that you wouldn't even be able to get up that close with it with a microscope to tell it wasn't grass, so from even less than a foot away, it looks pretty real by just painting it in. Anyway, that's how that goes. The pieces key into each other. The second lumber yard building goes right in like that. And uh, I think next time I'm gonna do, uh, take this section that's gonna be a yard I got this really cool tool I'll show you guys next uh, off of a seller on eBay that basically makes corrugated metal out of tin foil. So I started cutting that up already. And uh, we're going to be making a corrugated metal fence using a whole bunch of pieces that I'm going to kit bash. A lot of this stuff is HO. Uh, I don't use HO anymore. I've had this for years and years. Uh, but it's really cool when you can take something that's in HO scale that's like this overpass by lifelike. 
right? So we can take this overpass, chop out the sides, use it as a fence of sorts, put it up across there, and we're just going to line up like all of these uh, pieces of corrugated metal across it and make it look really nice. Look like a fence. You'll never know it was an HO. So here's one final pass of it from the opposite side. You can see a little bit more of the texture that I'm getting using the modeling paste and the gouache. This technique on the back end kind of sidewalk area was just uh, stippling it with a flat brush, making that kind of texture, and then, like I said before, just pushing the darker color gouache in. That's the section that I showed you last time with the palettes that I was working on. So uh, next video I'm just going to connect these up a little bit better, uh, start working on this yard that'll be filled with lumber and a bunch of scraps and things like that, put a fence in. I think I'm going to put the fence in around the back side here. We're going to finish up the uh, second level over here, put ladders in in the front, um, possibly um, gas container or some kind uh, for machinery. I could see if I could look around on eBay and find some uh, machines or things, you know, that would uh, carry lumber or forklifts or something like that in end scale. If anybody knows about a good source for something like forklifts, uh, let me know. And that's it. That's how the um, lumber yard's coming so far, and uh, I'll talk to you all soon. Thanks for watching.